Lego fans, it's collectible minifigure blind bag feeling time again, but whoa, things just got really weird. Lego Minifigures Series 20 was released on May the 1st, and usually I would be that guy waiting to feel out the bags at the Lego store. It might not be possible for you to go to the store right now, so I'm bringing the store to you. Today, I'm going to be feeling, unbagging, and reviewing a complete set of Lego Series 20 collectible minifigures. I'll also show you my system for feeling what's inside minifigure blind bags. You can get the minifigures you want with no disappointment, no duplicates, and no wasted money. This time we have 16 minifigures to collect, and no rare chase figures like Percival Graves or the classic policeman we've seen in previous releases. We have Piñata Boy who appears three times in every box of 60, Breakdancer also three per box, Peapod Costume Girl who appears four times, Tournament Knight which is one of the most common characters appearing five times in a box, Pirate Girl, who appears four times. Space Fan, also four times. The Awesome Llama Costume Girl, who appears three times per box, and the same for the Viking. Super Warrior appears five times in every box of 60. And Martial Arts Boy appears four times. A little bit rarer is the Athlete, who appears three times per box. And then we have the Sea Rescuer Diver Guy, who appears five times. Super easy to feel out is the Brick Costume Guy, who appears four times. And then we have the 80s musician, complete with Kitar, who appears three times. The adorable pyjama girl also appears three times per box. And finally we have the drone boy, who appears four times. Each blind bag contains one minifigure and costs a penny less than five US dollars. I've no desire to spend more time than necessary in a store right now, so I just grabbed 40 packs. You do the math. Before we get started, here are the basic principles. Either use one of the paper inserts that come inside the surprise bag, or go to Google and print out pictures of the minifigures. You need to be able to visualise the accessories that come with each minifigure. Some elements, such as the head, the base plate, and the legs will often feel alike. But there is only one cool 80s dude with a freaking keytar. These accessories are your friends when it comes to feeding out LEGO minifigure blind bags. To keep this interesting and keep me guessing, I've mixed up all of the bags. I'm going to feel out all 16 characters and explain what I'm feeling for so you can learn the system. There will also be a picture of the minifigure in the corner of the screen to help you visualise what I'm feeling for. After feeling out each character, we'll open up the bag to prove the system works and take a closer look at each minifigure. It's going to be a long video, so to help you, I'm going to put a link to each of the minifigures in the video description. If you're having trouble finding a specific minifigure, you can jump to that part of the video. We've got a lot of feeling to do, so let's get on with it. So here we go with series 20, and the great thing about bag number one is that it cannot possibly be a duplicate. Now this is quite a thin bag, so I usually have a quick feel around, see what, uh, see what stands out within there. Actually, straight away, I've got a piece which is quite thick. Now, actually, if you pinch the bag, you can see that is a shield shape. You can uh, feel the shape of the shield. Uh, you've got a handle on the back there. I think this could be the Tournament Knight who appears five times in every box. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We've got the torso piece. Uh, we have the legs. You can tell these are adult legs because they're long. And yeah, that's the helmet. So we have a shield and we also have a helmet. So this is definitely going to be the Tournament Knight. I'm gonna slice this open very carefully and we'll see if we can confirm what we were feeling inside the bag. So we should see, yep, there it is. So there is the shield I was feeling for. Really, really easy to feel out inside the bag and also a very distinctive helmet. There are a couple more accessories inside the bag which will help you to identify the Tournament Knight. Firstly we have this very medieval style sword, and then this crest which goes in the top of the helmet. Now be careful because we do get a crest with the pirate girl, and she also has a sword but it is more of a cutlass shaped sword, so you do want to feel these very carefully and really feel for that helmet and the shield. So here we have the rather intimidating looking Tournament Knight. I really like this red and yellow colour scheme. The shield is quite an easy element to feel out inside the bag as it's very pointy. It's also printed in three colours with this crest featuring a large bird. Looks like a black bird to me but I guess it could be a crow. In the other hand we have an impressive medieval style sword which is another element you can feel out inside the bag. Like many of these minifigures we have dual moulded legs but we also have some side printing here. 
Around the front we have more printing and some nice continuity from the torso down onto the legs. The torso print looks pretty flat at first, but when you turn it towards the light, you can see there are a lot of metallics in the print. I really like the chain mail around the neck. You'll find more of that around the back as well as some metallic detailing on the belt. The helmet is a really nice detailed element and I love those mean eyes peering through. Also impressive is the dark red plume on top of the helmet. Removing said helmet reveals the Tournament Knight's face. This is absolutely perfect with quite a serious expression and I love the beard and moustache. It's a really nice minifigure and I can imagine about 30 or 40 of these lined up on a battlefield. So here we have bag number two and let's dive straight in and see what we can feel in here. Um, okay, uh, what's that? Ah, firstly, so yeah, I've just found something round. I don't know if you can see it through the package. Um, that is round. There is a handle on the back of it. And I think that's already given me a little bit of a clue. So let's see what else we can find. And actually, yeah. So what I'm finding now is a piece of kind of bulbous headgear. You can tell it's headgear because you can get your finger right inside it. And yeah, it feels like some kind of helmet. So I've got a helmet and a shield. And then, oh, actually, yeah, we've got some kind of bar here. It's a little bit flexible. Uh, but I can feel, yeah, that's got a head. That's a spear. So this is going to be... The Viking, and there's only three of these in a box, so these are quite rare. And I think this guy comes with a cape, so I'm gonna be really careful about how I open the bag. In fact, I think there's an inner bag in this one. I could feel something else. So yeah, in fact, there you go. All of the plastic Lego elements are in an inner bag. And then we will have, uh, yeah, there is the spear, which is really easy to feel out. And before I throw this away, yeah, there is a really nice cape. You won't feel this through the bag, but what you can feel for, is firstly the, where's it gone? There it is, the shield. You'll feel that's round, and you'll also feel a handle on the back. And then we have a very distinctive helmet. So plenty to go feeling for for the Viking. So this is the Viking who has more than a passing resemblance to Tormund Giantsbane. He also gives me a sense of deja vu. In fact, we also had a minifigure titled Viking within Minifigures Series 4 back in 2011. Viking has a distinctive spear which makes it easy to feel out in the bag, but do be careful not to confuse this with the athlete. Thankfully we have this distinctive blue and white shield which has a kind of domed feel to it. As you can see, the face of the shield is rounded which makes it good for feeling out in the bag. The legs are nicely detailed and include some dual moulding and also some side printing. We also have some printing on the front of the legs which provides great continuity with the torso print. With LEGO being a Danish company, it's no surprise that the details here are very good. There's a metallic gold clasp for the cape, and also some kind of Norse-style pendant. The printed cape is a nice touch, but seems redundant when we have a fabric one. We only have one facial expression with this character, depicting a rather severe-looking ginger-bearded Viking. Everything pushes together very snugly. The helmet is a really basic element, but I do like the gold detailing on the front and the holes for the eyes. I don't think we can describe the Viking as a fun minifigure, but I certainly think it's a well-executed minifigure. And if you were to meet this guy on a dark night, you may also get well-executed too. So, bag number three, and unsurprisingly no duplicates so far. Let's have a feel around, see what we can find in here. Now that's catching my attention straight away. Um, we've actually got something really sharp and jagged in here. So we've got uh, like a, a stick or a pole that would fit into a minifigure's hand, and then there are, oh, I'll see if I can show you this through the bag. You've actually got three different prongs on this. It feels like a plant, and I think I know what this is. Uh, let's see what else we can find first of all. Uh, so this is kind of bulbous. That feels like a piece of headgear. I can get my finger in there a little bit. Feels like a helmet, so we've got a helmet and a plant. And that feels like either the same plant or another one. There's a visor for a helmet there. And I think we can just find one more thing. That will verify this for me. Um, that is not going to be it. What I'm actually feeling for is a water turtle. Uh, I think this is the uh, the sea rescuer or the diver. And in fact, yeah, what I've just found here is one of the flippers. So this is the only one of the characters which has flippers. So I am going to call this the sea rescuer. This is quite a common one. I believe it appears five times in every box. So you'll definitely see one of these if you go feeling for them. And let's take a look, see what we've got inside the bag. So yeah, 
So this is what I was feeling. This is a plant piece, very rigid. Uh, you'll hurt your fingers if you really uh, dig in on that. Then we have the flippers. These are quite easy. You might have to feel around for them, but that will firmly identify the diver. I also felt the helmet, which just feels like a standard minifigure helmet, and the visor here. But what I was looking for and didn't quite find was the, the actual turtle. As you can see here, it's quite a distinctive element. You can feel the uh, stud on the bottom there. And then we have... Oh, I see what I was feeling. We have one of these dynamic pose pieces which feel quite funny in the bag. That's what I was struggling with. Let me put this together and we'll see how it looks. So this minifigure is titled Sea Rescuer and she comes with some of these dynamic pose elements. I've used two of these to make the diver look like she's swimming alongside a sea turtle. Trust me, this was super fiddly to do. The sea turtle is a really cute element made out of dual molded plastic and with printed eyes. Underneath is an anti-stud and you can use one of the dynamic pose elements in trans clear to make it look like the turtle is swimming with the diver. To attract the turtle, the diver has a nice big bunch of leafy greens. Both of these elements alongside the flippers make this diver really easy to feel out inside the bag. Often collectible minifigures wearing flippers can be a liability because you cannot stand them on the base plate. With the trans clear dynamic pieces you can actually display the minifigure complete with the flippers. The colour choices are really nice and I like the dual moulded legs with black for the wetsuit and yellow for the minifigure's skin. Around the front we have some decorative lines on the wetsuit and some more printing up on the torso showing the female form and a really cute logo of a sea turtle. Around the back we have some more printed detail for the zipper on the back of the wetsuit and you can see that we have dual moulded arms. The helmet is a pretty standard Lego helmet, but then we have a visor piece which incorporates the goggles and also a snorkel. As we have no air tank, it seems she's a snorkeler and not a scuba diver. So that is the Sea Rescuer, which is one of the most common minifigures appearing five times per box. She's a great minifigure with lots of poseable options, but actually posing her can be quite difficult. So I had a couple of duplicates there, but I am going to edit those out of the video. So let's see what we've got in this bag and interesting. Um, so there's quite a thick element there and that's a base plate and then we've got a kind of square, almost feels like a one by three brick. Um, let me see if I can squeeze that a little bit. So yeah, rectangular piece here and it has a handle on the top. Now this can only be one thing. This is going to be the break dancer, I believe, but let's just verify that. So the other thing we've got is a very big piece of either hair or hat. I think it's actually a hat um, with hair built into it. Uh, but it's the stereo, the boom box, which is going to give this away. And if you find a boom box in one of these, you know you've got the breakdancer. She appears, I think, three times per box. So she is one of the rarer characters. And let's see, let's check what we've got. We do have the base plate. Yeah, we always get one of those. But this is the big hat and hair combined piece. Very rigid plastic, so you really will feel this through the bag. And then we have... Uh, yeah, there we go, the radio. That really nails it. That uh, makes this very distinctively the break dancer. We do also, I see, get some of these dynamic pose pieces which I've dropped, uh, but that actually enables you to, you can uh, place the break dancer in a dynamic move, which we'll take a look at in a second. So here we have the break dancer, who is quite an interesting minifigure. She comes with a dynamic pose element, which means you can get quite creative. You can either attach these to the bottom of the feet or the back of the legs to make it look like the minifigure is jumping or even flying. In this case, the break dancer is dancing to tunes from her classic 80s boombox. As you can see on the front, we've got somewhere to put a cassette and some fantastic gold printing. If you're trying to feel out the break dancer, this is definitely what you want to be feeling for. The legs are dual molded out of black and white plastic, and if we turn her around to the front, we have some printing for the sneakers, what I guess might be some knee pads, and then some sporty tracksuit bottoms. The torso print shows off a very snug fitting top and some fantastic abs. There's some more definition around the back, but you can see where the print ends and the orange plastic begins. The facial expression is great, it looks very sassy, and I like the fact that we've got matching lipstick. The other really cool detail is the shaved eyebrow. But my favorite part about this minifigure has to be the hat and hair combination. I don't recognise the symbol on the front of the cap, maybe you guys do, but I love the fact that it's set at a jaunty angle like this. I also really like the red hair which flows down over the front and also the back of the body. I suspect she may not be a natural redhead. 
So that's the breakdancer, let's see what else we can find. After saying the breakdancer was rare, I actually got another one straight away. So we're moving on to another package. Uh, we've got the base plate in there. Let's see what we've got here. We do have the adult legs. I can feel the size of those. They are long and they bend. Uh, we've got a head there, so we really need something distinctive. Let's go feeling for accessories. That's a torso piece, that's no good. Um, okay, that goes on top of the head, I think. That feels like hair, so yeah, some of these figures have hair, some of them have hats, but actually, yeah, here we go. Uh, so, right, what I've got in the corner is I've got what feels like a little stick here with a handle, uh, and actually there's two of them side by side. Actually, if we give this a little shake, yeah, I can feel there are chain pieces between them. So this is actually going to be, I think, the first real Lego nunchuck element. I think we got some for Ninjago, but they're actually made up of other elements. This is a custom piece, and this is definitely, definitely, definitely going to be the uh, martial arts boy. He appears four times in every box, and let's just verify that. We should have a nice white minifigure coming out of the bag. And yeah, lots of white we see here. So we've got lots of standard stuff. But yeah, so there we have the hair. You can feel it's a hair element. You can get your finger inside it. But then the thing you want to be looking for with the martial arts boy is this pair of nunchucks. I think we only get one per bag. Yes, we do. Um, nothing left in the bag. No. Nope. So that is what you're going to be feeling for for the martial arts boy. This is martial arts boy and a great looking minifigure. His accessory is this really cool pair of nunchucks which are really easy to feel out in the bag and I'm sure you'll be seeing those in Ninjago sets soon. Nunchucks are used for karate and bad 70s movies. This guy is wearing what I assume is going to be his karate uniform. He's wearing a traditional martial arts kimono complete with black belt to hold his trousers up. There's also some kind of logo and what looks like a signature. We see a similar logo on the headband which is poking out from underneath the hair. We also have a rather determined facial expression. If that's too serious, you can spin the head around and get a nice smile. The hair is an interesting design and I like the centre parting which allows the hair to fall over the face. The hair is neatly trimmed around the neck and then we have another logo on the back of the kimono for, I guess, the dojo. Martial Arts Boy appears four times in every box of 60 and with the popularity of martial arts, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be trying to add this to their collection. I think that martial arts boy might become quite a sought after minifigure, but let's press on and see what we've got in here. We've got the leaflet, uh, we do have, now that, um, that is some kind of headgear. So just feeling around here, yeah that is some kind of peaked cap. Now there are a couple of characters in series 20 with a cap, so I'm not going to jump to conclusions just yet. Let's see what else we've got, we've got a torso. And what is this? So, okay, uh, I always give it a shake just to make sure I've got a single element. Now that's interesting, I've got something here. I think I know what I've got. So this feels like uh, a pair of blades. And uh, if I'm right, there should be multiples of these, at least four of these. And uh, there's also a one by one flat stud here. There's a head. I think this is gonna be the drone boy, uh, but Key to finding this out, yeah, there's another one of those uh, rotor blades, I think, is it? Uh, oh no, actually this is going to be the body of the drone. And the other thing you should be able to find is kind of a, a tile which is almost a quarter circle. And I'll show that to you in a second, but yeah, yeah, I've got that clear stud. Um, yeah, I can definitely feel that. So yeah, this is definitely going to be Drone Boy. Very, very confident of that with the hat and also the drone parts. But I do want to show you the little remote controller that you should be able to see inside. So let's do that. And obviously if I spend a little bit more time feeling, I would be able to feel this out. But yeah, here is the other thing that's very, very distinctive. Easy to feel out in the bag if you can get that isolated in the corner. We do have the cap piece here, but I think the, um, the Rocket Girl also wears a similar kind of cap. And uh, what else have we got? We've got the, yeah, the unmistakable star-shaped piece of the drone. And then you will find, I'm looking for a viewfinder, so I'm struggling to find these. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of these uh, little, what do you call them? Rotor blade pieces. So yeah, do feel for those also. Here we have the rather impressive drone boy, complete with a bunch of accessories. He's carrying this impressive looking drone, which comes complete with four rotor blades. And of course we do get a spare. The drone comes complete with a camera for capturing impressive 4K vistas. 
Drone Boy comes with a standard pair of dark blue legs, but does have an impressive custom printed torso. He's wearing a white shirt with T logo, but I can't figure out what that stands for, and also a green hooded jacket. We have some more printing around the back, which shows the hood. The baseball cap is quite an easy element to feel out inside the bag. Just be aware that three of the characters from Series 20 have a baseball cap. This one feels different because it doesn't have inbuilt hair. There's only one facial expression on Drone Boy, but this one is a corker. It shows him visibly concentrating on flying the drone, complete with his tongue stuck out. The other cool detail is the band-aid on the face. Those rotor blades can do some serious damage. Of course we can't pilot a drone without some kind of control mechanism. Here we have a printed part which shows the drone's controls and also a screen for monitoring what's coming through on the camera. Drone Boy is a really cool minifigure and should pose you no problems at all when feeling out these Lego blind bags. Okay, so let's see what we've got here then. We have quite a thick package. Um, oh, I did have something then. Actually, I think it might have been the legs on the side. Um, let's see if we can find something here. So, what's this? Let's give it a shake just to isolate the part you're feeling. Now, this is a helmet. Actually, this is quite a distinctive helmet. Uh, so, yeah, I can get my finger up inside. I can feel where the head goes. But then there's like a, a chevron, a V-shape on top. And it's actually kind of sharp. You don't want to jab your fingers with this. So, I think... That actually feels... What's the name of the figure? The uh, the Super Warrior. Looks like a Power Ranger, but obviously LEGO don't have the, uh, the rights to use that. Now, I do have something else here. This is a very flexible piece, uh, very flat, and I can just feel at the bottom here there's, um, there's like a, a handhold, and that feels like the lightning piece that the Super Warrior is holding. So, actually, I'm pretty confident of that. I think those are the only two distinctive parts within this particular minifigure. You will find the Super Warrior a lot. It appears five times in every box, and we should see a flash of red, which we do. Okay, so what we're feeling for, first of all, is this very distinctive helmet. So, firstly, it's a helmet. You can get your finger inside there, and it has these really sharp, kind of chevron-like formations on the top there. And then, going from sharp to very um, not sharp at all, this is a very uh, flexible piece of uh, some kind of power sword. You can actually feel through the bag the notches in that sword. So, let's put this guy together and take a closer look. This is Super Warrior, which is one of the minifigures I'm less excited about. To me, this looks like some kind of knockoff Chinese Power Ranger. His accessory is this green power sword thing. It's got an interesting shape, but it's actually quite flimsy. The thing I do like about this minifigure is the extensive use of gold printing. We have dual molded red and white legs, which give a great deal of contrast, and then some printed detail on the front of the suit. The torso print has a futuristic pattern and a white belt which looks a little bit washed out and pink. We do however get some printed detail on the arms which is quite a rarity for series 20 and on the back of the minifigure you'll find a continuation of the printing which we saw around the front. The easiest thing to feel out in the bag is this very distinctive helmet. You'll feel a hole in the bottom for the minifigure head and then the distinctive V-shape up on top. There is a minifigure face printed underneath which looks very serious and isn't particularly well printed. It just looks a little bit washed out. Honestly, I'm just not a really big fan of this minifigure, and I know I've got a bunch of duplicates also. So let's move on and see if we can find something better. Okay, so I seem to be having quite a run of duplicates at the moment. I will cut those out so you don't have to sit through them, uh, but let's feel what we've got here. It might be another duplicate, might not be. Uh, we have a torso piece there, quite a thin bag this. Uh, there's your instruction booklet and the base plate. Then, come on, we need something good to work with. Um, okay, well, that's different. Um, that is either, uh, yeah, that's something that goes on a head. So I can actually get my finger inside this piece here. It uh, actually feels like hair. It feels like long hair. I don't think we have many characters with long hair in this series. Uh, so that could be quite a clue. Uh, I already have my uh, suspicions about this one. And then this feels distinctive. So what have we got here? Oh, I wonder. Uh, yeah, so what I've got here is a, a flat piece. So it's kind of like a one by two here, but then it gets 
thinner, and then there's a bit at the end here. It actually feels a little bit like a guitar. And in fact, on the back of it, there is a, um, a thing sticking out for the minifigure to grip it with. Now, I know we don't have a guitarist here, but we do have a keytarist, which is about the coolest thing you could possibly have in the 80s. Basically, a keytar is a keyboard in the shape of a guitar. So, yeah, this is definitely going to be the uh, the 80s musician or the guitarist. Um, the 80s was definitely my uh, era of choice for music. And yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. So yeah, we've got the torso piece there, some great printing, which we'll take a look at in a second. Uh, but yeah, we've got the uh, the 80s hair, uh, looks like my hair does now. And then we have the keto, which is a fantastic new element. You can see it looks like a guitar, but it's actually a keyboard and there's a, a thing on the back there for the minifigure to grip it with you can feel that through the bag you'll definitely feel the difference between the keyboard and the uh, I guess the neck of the guitar here so you really want to feel for that and the hair so this is 80s musician who only appears three times in every box of 60. I'm a big fan of the 80s and of course all of that synthesizer based pop music perfectly suited to the era for the first time we have a lego guitar element a keytar is basically a synthesizer or a keyboard that you can wear around your neck and play on stage. 80s musician is wearing an outrageous pair of pink pants complete with a little bit of printing there for the belt. He's also wearing a leather biker jacket over white t-shirt with lightning shaped symbol. He must be playing for some kind of synth bass rock band like Van Halen. He's even got the outrageous long hair. In fact that's a really nice element with lots of texture around the back. The jacket isn't just any jacket, it is a tour jacket and you can see on the back we've got the tour logo. Finally we have a secondary expression with the eyes wide open and a perfect white smile. 80s musician is a great minifigure and I'm really pleased to get that guitar element. Okay, so let's see what we've got next. This is a kind of thin bag and I can feel straight away there's an inner bag here. So I wonder if there's going to be a cape or something. We've got a leaflet. Uh, definitely feels strange. Now, actually, uh, oh, that's handy. So we've got something round in here. So uh, I, I guess it could be the Viking, but no. Yeah, we've got a round piece, a two by two round piece, uh, but it's actually flat on the back. And I think that can only mean one thing. Uh, that is probably going to be the, the athlete or looks like an Olympian. Um, what have we got here? We do have some kind of headgear. This feels like hair. Definitely not a helmet. Um, I think there's one more thing. I, oh, in fact, there it is. Uh, so yeah, the, um, the athlete has a, a javelin or a spear, uh, which feels very similar to the one the Viking is holding. So you've got to be careful about that. But yeah, we've got the spear. We've got the, uh, the round thing, which is going to be the uh, discus and also the hair. So I am going to very carefully open this up. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the athlete and not the Viking. And the athlete is one of the rarer figures. She does appear three times in every box. As you can see here, you've got to be careful when opening these. I've already opened up the inner bag, but you can see uh, what else have we got in here? Okay, so here is the spear, which is very similar to the one we got with the Viking. It's not quite the same, it's a different mold, uh, more of a traditional spear mold, which we've had around since uh, Lego Castle. Uh, but then you can feel other things in here. So, uh, what is that? Um, oh, that's the medal. Sorry, I can't see behind the camera. Yeah, that's the gold medal. Uh, so that's a good thing to feel for, but also this. This is the only minifigure with one of these round elements here, and you want to be feeling that to make sure you've got an anti-stud on the back. If you get any kind of doming on this circle or a handle on the back, it's going to be the Viking. So yeah, that's the athlete, and we shall put it together and take a closer look. So this is the athlete who reminds me rather a lot of the Team GB collectible minifigures. I really must add those to my collection. She's carrying this practically invisible spear, which I'm sure is meant to be a javelin. You'll need to take care not to mistake that for the spear that the Viking is holding. In the other hand, we have this track and field discus. Again, take care not to confuse that with the shield from the Viking. This is absolutely flat while the Viking's shield is rounded. The attention to detail on the legs is really nice with dual molding and also side printing. Around the front, we have more printing, picking out the white detail in the shorts and also a logo, which is strangely familiar. I don't know where I've seen this before, but it really is killing me. Another thing you can feel out in the bag is the gold medal. In fact, we get two of these. It's a really nice element and I like the metallic gold print. 
The bib number 0937 is actually a really cool easter egg. If you know what this easter egg is referring to, do let me know in the comments below and I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. The printing around the back is pretty much the same thing, but this does give us a chance to take a look at the hair. It's a nice element in this dark brown colour, but I don't think it's an exclusive to the minifigure. Another nice touch is the facial expression, which has a huge smile. Ultimately, no matter how much blood, sweat and tears you pour into something, you do have to lose now and again. This alternate expression is a really nice way to reflect that. With the exception of the gold medal, I don't think the accessories are very good, but it's quite a nice minifigure and I do like the easter egg on the bib. And so on to yet another bag and... Oh, oh right, okay. Oh, right, okay. So this is going to be the brick costume guy, straight away. I can feel a pretty much a full-size 2x3 Lego brick in there. Very, very distinctive. This guy appears, I think, um, four times in every box. Really, really easy to feel out, so you're going to have no problem getting one of them. And really, yeah, beyond feeling a Lego brick, a full-size Lego brick inside the bag, you don't need to go any further. Now, this is going to be a good complement to the, uh, the I think, the red girl and the blue guy we got in the party series. Uh, but, yeah. This is all you need to know. We've got this uh, kind of green brick costume that goes down over the legs. I think we do get, do we get a torso element? No, we don't, of course, because the arms are built in. So let me put that together and we'll take a closer look. So this is Brick Costume Guy who appears four times in every box of 60. He is by far the easiest minifigure to feel out. And as you can see here by the two x two printed tile, he's celebrating 10 years of Lego collectible minifigure blind bags. The brick costume is not a new element, but it is a new color. We previously had red and blue within the party series of collectible minifigures. The brick costumes are functional, but I'm not sure this is appropriate social distancing. In fact, I think this is how they make one by twos for the Lego pick a brick wall. The brick costume comes in place of the normal torso and is paired with green Lego minifigure legs. The brick costume comes in place of the normal Lego minifigure torso and is paired with green legs. The facial expression is great with a big toothy smile and I really love the trendy haircut. This guy sure likes to use a lot of hair gel. Brick costume guy isn't exactly new and isn't exactly imaginative, but it is great to get a new colorway to go with the red and blue versions. So we have a large and growing pile of duplicates on the floor here. Let's see if we can find something new finally. Uh, we've got a head there, that's a minifigure head. And then, actually that's a large element. So what have we got here? We have, feels like headgear. So yeah, there is a hole in the bottom there. That's probably gonna be for a minifigure's head. This is a long, long piece of headgear with ears. Now I think this is gonna be the llama costume girl. But let's see what else we can find in here. We've got some, uh, I think those are legs. Yep, those are movable legs. And then what's this? So what we have, ah, yeah, yeah, I recognize that straight away. So that is gonna be the, uh, the stalk of the carrot which the llama costume girl is holding. I'm just looking at my characters on the sheet and there aren't any more characters with one of those. Um, I should be able to, yep, there we go. That is a carrot element. So these are pretty common in Lego, uh, but you can feel it's kind of tapered, uh, nice rounded end. That's a carrot. So this is gonna be the llama costume girl, and she appears three times. I'm actually really excited about this one. This one looks super cool. Uh, just wanna get that carrot element out the corner, but let's go in anyway, because I know I can't cut it. And what we should see is a large uh, kind of tan element come out of here. And yep, so this is what you're feeling for. There we go. Okay, large piece of headgear. Isn't that awesome? Uh, but you can see the minifigure's head goes in the bottom here. You can get your finger in there. Got a, a window there for the minifigure to see out of. And then this magnificent llama head. Also within here, you're gonna get one of these uh, carrot stalk pieces. And you'll find exactly what I just dropped the carrot piece, so really easy to feel out, but you're only gonna get three of these in every box. So this is Llama Costume Girl, and one of the minifigures I've been really looking forward to. You'll find three of this character in every box of 60, but the large llama headgear really makes it easy. It's actually a pretty detailed costume and has some really nice printing. If the massive llama head isn't a big enough clue, you can also feel out the carrot and the carrot stalk. The minifigure parts are mostly tan, although we do have some printing on the feet and also some printing on the chest. 
You'll notice the minifigure also has gloved hands which are in a dark tan colour. Proving indeed this is a costume and not a genetic experiment gone wrong, we do have a metallic silver zipper printed on the back. The facial expression on the front of the minifigure head is quite cute but also quite serious. That changes completely on the other side where we have a big toothy grin. Llama Costume Girl is a really nice minifigure and even if you're not going for a whole set I'd definitely try feeling out one of these guys. So let's see what we have here then. We've got a kind of medium thick bag, there are some chunky elements in here. So I'll just do a quick feel round, see if I can feel anything distinctive and yes, first of all I've got I think a piece of headgear. So yeah I can definitely get my finger into there, it is minifigure head shape um, and that feels like a cap. So yeah I've definitely got the peak of a cap here. In fact, if I pinch it, you can probably see the outline of it. Now, what I can feel on the back here is not what I expect to feel on the back of a cap. Um, I think this has got hair built in. But let's have a feel around and see what else we can find. Uh, I've got the base plate there and the leaflet. Um, that's probably the hat again. And okay, yeah, yeah. So we've got a more distinctive piece here. Now, this is kind of round, but it's got fins coming out of it. And I suspect if I was to feel a little bit more, uh, we are going to find a cone-shaped element because this is going to be uh, the NASA-themed space van. In fact, yeah, I've got the, um, the cone from the top of the space rocket at the bottom there. So, yeah, this is definitely going to be the space van. Uh, I'm just reaching for the scissors and let's take a look. So, we have, yep, definitely what I'm looking for. That's the instructions. Ah, now that's interesting. I didn't feel that out in the bag, but uh, I think, yeah, just looking up at the picture, this is the only character with one of these two by three tiles. Really nicely printed, so you could definitely feel that out in the bag. Um, again, very distinctive here is the uh, the base of the rocket. Makes it really easy to feel. You've got this kind of round object with the fins on, and then also the cap. Now, this feels a little bit like the cap that the drone boy is wearing, but this has actually got hair built into the back there. Look at it, dual molded out of two different pieces of plastic, and yeah, I've dropped it, so we'll get her built and take a closer look. So this is Space Fan, who has lots of accessories and also some really cool details. I'm guessing she's a model rocket enthusiast and we have this really cool NASA themed rocket. It's made of three standard Lego elements including a NASA printed cylinder. We also have a standard Lego wrench which is useful for feeling out the minifigure. Also useful is this 2x3 printed tile which shows a blueprint of the rocket. I do see a signature down in the bottom right hand corner and I wonder if this is some kind of reference to the designer or maybe some kind of easter egg. The minifigure's wearing a dark blue pair of pants which have a printed design or maybe they've been bejazzled. I definitely appreciate the classic Lego Space logo that's on there. Speaking of classic Lego Space, check out the 4797 Galaxy Explorer on the shirt. This was released in 1979 and if you have one of these mint in box it's worth a cool two grand. There is a small amount of printing around the back but it's just showing some grey printing to complement the arms. The really cool element is the hat with inbuilt hair. This is pretty distinctive and you can feel it out in the bag. Emphasising the minifigure's love of space we even have a space logo on the front of the cap. We also have a really cool facial expression which really conveys a sense of wonder. The alternate expression is also very cool showing a pair of safety goggles. After all safety is our number one priority. Space Fan is a really cool minifigure with lots of great accessories and really shouldn't be a problem to feel out in the bag. You'll also find four of these in every box. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We have a bag with um, fairly thin this one, so let's see what we can find inside. We've got a torso piece, we've got a head, and then, oh right, okay, so we've got a big element here. Uh, I can actually feel it's got kind of slots up the side there. So I think this is going to be something that goes over the torso of a minifigure. Um, and in fact, yeah, that's really interesting the way that feels. Uh, if I kind of pinch it up here, we can actually feel across the front of it. We've got one, two, kind of three bulges on the front here. And this is going to be the Peapod Costume Girl. A very distinctive piece this. Uh, she appears four times per box, so she's kind of middle of the road in ter terms of rareness. Uh, we've got a head there. And I believe, for some reason, in fact there it is, 
Yeah, she is actually carrying a Lego Apple element. I don't know what that's all about, but this is definitely going to be the Peapod Girl because we've got the costume and also that Apple element. Uh, very, very distinctive. You can't mistake her for anybody else. So let's see. We should see a lot of green in this bag. And yes, we do indeed. So this is the piece you really want to be feeling for. So you feel the ridges up the side there. Nice, big, chunky piece. And then we've got the peas in the pod here. And then a gap there for the face, which is really nice. And then also to confirm, we do have this Lego Apple piece. This is Peapod Costume Girl and she's awesome. She's also really easy to feel out in a blind bag because of that Peapod costume. I love the way we have peas moulded into the front and then a gap for the face. It's such a tactile element. The thing I don't understand is why she's holding an apple. It's a great element to have, especially in that red colour. But let's see if we can shed some light on why. Hidden beneath the Peapod costume we have dark green legs and then a dual coloured torso. The torso print features a big bowl of salad, so I wonder if she's promoting healthy eating or maybe handing out flyers for a salad restaurant. In any case, I love the way she's gone above and beyond to match the lipstick to the colour of the costume. The alternate expression shows a big smile, which I think I prefer, and you can make out just a little bit of printing around the back of the torso. Honestly, this probably wasn't needed, but I guess if they're printing the front, they're printing the back. I always like these costume minifigures, but this is a particularly good one, especially with that big smile. So with worryingly few blind bags remaining, we have 13 of 16 found, and this one is a thin package. Uh, let's see what we've got in here. Uh, so this is the thickest element, and feels almost like a, a helmet, something like that. Um, very rigid. Um, but there is a hole in the bottom there. I can get my finger inside, so definitely some kind of headgear. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, that's going to be a torso piece. And then, well, that's interesting. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I can feel the two prongs in the top. So this is going to be a pair of legs that connect to a minifigure torso. And these are super short and do not bend. So these are child legs. And honestly, I think there's only one of these minifigures with the non-bendable child legs. Uh, so what I'm actually thinking here is that this is probably going to be the pyjama girl. And as I say that, I'm actually finding this adorable little girl's uh, pet bunny. So yeah, what we can feel here is uh, an animal, but you've got two long ears on the top here. Uh, I've got a couple of arms and then you can feel the feet on the bottom there. So this is definitely going to be the pyjama girl. You're feeling for those short legs and also the bunny inside the package. This is adorable and I know people are going to be feeling out for this. And only appears three times per box so it's going to be quite a sought after minifigure. And let's have a look. We should see some pink and we do. Let's just give that a real good tip. So this is the, <laughs> look at that, that is amazing. Uh, but the really nice element to feel out in the bag. You've got these long ears, you can feel the arms. And then the other thing you want to be feeling for is these legs. So these legs are tiny, they're the child size legs, and they do not move. So you feel the prongs on top here, and you're gonna feel out this character very easily. So yeah, really cute PJs as well with the, uh, the bunnies on. Anyway, let's put it together and take a closer look. So this is Pyjama Girl, complete with her beloved bunny, and she is adorable. This is her furry wabbit friend, and he is great. We've got some really nice printing for the eyes, nose and mouth, and also a little accent detail for the chest. No printing around the back, but we do have some moulding for the rabbit's bobtail. Pyjama Girl comes with the short format, non-movable minifigure legs, so these are really easy to feel out inside the bag. Just don't get them mixed up with Pinata Guy. The pink pyjama top is printed with rabbit logos which match her rabbit friend. This is simply adorable. The same logo is not only printed on the back of the torso, but also on the printed arms. Really complementing this minifigure is the blonde hair which cascades over the front and the back of the minifigure's shoulders. Finally completing this fantastic minifigure, we have an adorable facial print. Pyjama Girl is a beautiful, beautiful thing and may just make my top 5 at the end of the video. Okay, so I am down to my last two bags and I'm still looking for two minifigures, so I am seriously worried. Um, what we've got here is a pair of long adult legs. I think I am looking for a, a smaller pair of legs for the, um, the pinata boy, but oh, okay. So I have found something interesting here. Uh, we have a 
triangular piece, which doesn't feel like the base of the rocket. This feels different, and that could be a good sign. So I think actually this is gonna be, let me just check the little finger test. Yeah, I can get my finger in there. This is a tricorn hat. And I think this is gonna be the, uh, the pirate girl. What else can we find? Ah, now that's interesting. So, oh, knock the camera. Uh, we have, yeah, this is a, a sword. It's the um, the cutlass style sword. That's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, I definitely think this is the pirate girl. Now you do have to be careful with this because somewhere in this package, you are gonna find a crest which goes in the top of the tricorn hat. And of course the, the feather or the crest also goes with the knight, but Given that we felt out the tricorn hat, I'm pretty confident in calling this as the pirate girl. And let's see what we've got. She should have a white torso, black legs. And yeah, yeah, that's definitely the one I'm looking for. So hang on, we've still got another plume to get out of the bag. And yeah, so we've got a couple of these red plumes. We always get a spare one. We do get spare ones also with the, uh, the tournament night. Uh, we've got the head there, so let's see what we can feel. This is gonna be the key thing that you're feeling for. This is the tricorn hat from Pirate Girl. Very distinctive in the bag, you can feel the three corners. Feels almost like the Highwayman hat, which was a, a chase character we got a little while back, uh, but we've got the hair in the back as well, which makes it feel very distinctive. And then we've actually got two of these cutlass style swords. If you know your Lego swords, you will be able to feel out those out inside the bag. So. Loads of nice elements to feel out here. Um, yep. So let's get it put together and see how she looks. Why are pirates mean? Because they are. This is Pirate Girl and she sails the seven seas looking for treasure and rum. You'll need to take care not to confuse this with the sword that the tournament knight is holding. But Pirate Girl has this really nice cutlass, which is one of the things that you can feel out inside the bag. The costume is pretty simple, but really nicely printed. We have black legs overprinted with stripy breeches and some gold detailing for the top of the boots. The torso print shows a ruffled shirt complete with belt and strap across the shoulder. As you can see, we've got some really nice gold printed detail. That detail continues to the back of the torso and on the belt at the back, we have a pouch for holding pieces of eight. The facial expression is quite menacing and I can't figure out whether she's got a gap between her teeth or a bad tooth. The alternate expression is a little bit more friendly and now I'm starting to think that might be a broken tooth. The tricorn hat with built-in hair is the easiest thing to feel out in the bag. You may also be able to feel out the red plume. There's two of them inside the bag and one of them goes in the top of the hat for decoration. This is a dual molded piece and as you can see the hat and the hair are molded into one element. Pirate Girl is definitely one of the less elaborate minifigures from the collection but I actually really like this. The costume has just the right amount of detail and I really like that quirky facial expression with the broken tooth. So this is literally the last bag of 40 and I'm praying this is gonna be the uh, pinata boy and straight away actually. Yeah, this is actually really easy to feel out. We have three of these per every box of 60 and what you're feeling for, if you just kind of pat down the bag, you can feel there's usually an accessory that sticks out more than others. And yeah, what we've got here is a round, Mexican style hat. Um, very, very distinctive. You can feel like the dome on top of it. You can feel the ridge. Uh, you could almost use this to make uh, nachos. And within here as well, we should have quite a large animal piece. And in fact, I can feel it there. It is, uh, yeah, we've got four legs. We've got a head there. We've got some ears on top. Yeah, this is gonna be the pinata boy. Now, there is quite a fancy Mexican cape in here, and you can feel the inner package as well. So I'm gonna be really, really careful with this one because the last thing I wanna do is cut that, especially with it being uh, such a relatively rare figure. So let's tear this one open this time. I always throw the bags away. So let's see what we've got inside. Uh, tip it all out. And I can already see the cape. Yeah, I think that's everything. Okay, get rid of the trash. So, in fact, this is good. Um, I wanna say we've got two capes, but we probably use both of these, one on the front and one on the back. Uh, but what we can feel out inside the bag, we've got this little inner bag full of pieces, very distinctive hat piece here. You can feel the, um, like the dome on top, you can feel the ridge around the outside. And then we've got this fantastic pinata piece. So this is the adorable pinata guy and his candy stuffed victim. This is definitely one of the standout minifigures from the collection and he looks great. 
I'm not certain if the pinata is a new element, but it's certainly new in this colourway. It looks fantastic with the stripes printed over the pastel yellow. The printing is really sharp and I like the way the blue printing on the ears goes right up to the edge. One thing I really do like about this is the nostril that's printed on the pinata. It gives it a bunch of character and I can't imagine why somebody would want to beat this thing to death. Just look at the wide-eyed face on this kid, he just can't wait to start beating on the pinata. The dark blue legs are the short, non-bendable version and are easy to feel out inside the bag. The torso is a plain old white version with no printing, so we'll focus on the poncho. This is actually two pieces, one which goes at the front and one which goes at the back. He also has a large stick, which is the same thing that used to pass for a wand in the early Harry Potter characters. And then we have that facial expression which is full of joy and wonder. But the best thing about this minifigure is the sombrero. It's a traditional Mexican style hat with a large brim and makes this really easy to feel out inside the blind bag. To add to the visual appeal, we even get some really nice printing around the outside. I'll let you know which minifigures are my favourites at the end of the video, but you can be sure this is probably in the top 5. So that was LEGO Minifigures Series 20, and finally we get to bring all of these characters together. Piñata Boy, Breakdancer, Peapod Costume Girl, Tournament Knight, Pirate Girl, Space Fan, Llama Costume Girl, Viking, Super Warrior, Martial Arts Boy, Athlete, Sea Rescuer, Brick Costume Guy, 80s Musician, Pajama Girl, and Drone Boy. I did promise to share my top 5 from Minifigures Series 20, but before we do that, I'm going to tell you which one I like least. My least favourite figure from Series 20 has to be Super Warrior. It's pretty uninspired and frankly just a rip-off of the Red Power Ranger. So what about my top 5? Here we go! In 5th place I'm going with the 80s Musician. I love everything 80s and the guitar was just to die for. In 4th place is Sea Rescuer. I really like the dynamic poses and that sea turtle was awesome. She's a very strong contender but ultimately comes in 3rd, it's Pajama Girl. In 2nd place because of the cool accessories and references to classic LEGO space, we have Space Fan. But my number 1 from Minifigures Series 20 has to be Piñata Boy. The piñata's awesome, I really like the Mexican hat, and the colourful poncho just sealed the deal. But what do you guys think? If you've made it this far through the video, do let me know in the comments below which ones are your favourites and which ones you won't be feeling out. I really hope you enjoyed this Minifigures Series 20 blind bag feeling guide and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. You'll also find a bunch of videos on my channel where I'm feeling out previous series. Needless to say, if you are going to go feeling blind bags, do do this with courtesy and with respect to your own health. That said, thanks a million for checking out today's review, I hope you found it entertaining, and I'll see you on the next build video!